Okay, so this is Mark meets Robin. Robin doesn't need an introduction. Um, Robin, can you give us a quick summary of your career to date? Well, I am what is called an advertising geek because I, I fell in love with advertising uh, when I was at school and I formed a view, which I discovered to be true later on, that advertising is the most fun you can have with your clothes on. <laughs> so I went from school, I went to Cambridge, um, I set up an advertising agency at Cambridge, uh, I wanted to be a copywriter and very quickly I was working for I think the greatest advertising agency of my generation which is Colin Dickinson Pearson Partners where in the same corridor was Charles Saatchi, uh, was Alan Parker, um, David Putnam had just left. So, what year was this roughly? This was 1968, uh, when most of the people watching this video had not been born. True. Um, and then I set up in 1979, I was one of the founding partners of White Collins Rutherford Scott, and that had its ups and had its downs. And then seven years ago, we bought it out of the, the, the French controlled it and owned it um, and created um, Bill Brown the core of WCRS, another company which we call Engine and now WCRS is about no more than 20% of our business. Um, our biggest single business is corporate communications and public affairs um, but then we've got uh, the fastest growing part is social media with an agency like Jam, we've got sponsorship, we've got direct marketing. Um, and we've got a concept of best in class under one roof. So that's roughly quick whirlwind summary of 14 years. So when you when you joined this industry, did you ever think that this would be created? Did you ever kind of visualise your career looking like this? Well, no, because you know when I came into this industry, uh, you know, a computer was about the size of this building. Yeah. Uh, Mobile phones didn't exist, fax machines didn't exist. Uh, when we started our agency in 79, we were the first agency in London to have Wang word processors. No one's ever heard of those, but those were the things you did. They were the, you know, the iPhones of their day. We insisted that all our clients had a fax machine in our contract so we could fax them layers down, down the phone. Um, you know, I mean, think about it another way. When, you know, one of the best campaigns I've been involved with was Orange, which we did in 1994. Think about it. When Orange was launched, there was 8% uh, mobile phone penetration. That, um, you know, the, the mobile phone, well, the whole Apple thing didn't exist. So, in other words, the technology that has changed uh, is something I could never have envisaged. However, there's one thing that's the same. And one thing that's the same is a big idea is everything. So now you've got many, many more ways to distribute it. But uh, the future's bright, the future's orange. There was, there was no online or digital. And all of those things you know, would have been, would have, should have been done if they could have been done. So the, re the really exciting thing, and this is why you know, I come to work you know, you know, even more excited than 40 years ago, is that you've got all these new ways to do things. You know, you've got social media, you've got tweeting, you know, you've, got, you know, uh, you've got a whole explosion of methodologies which make it much more than it ever was the most fun you can with your clothes on. Who influenced you to get into advertising? Did you have a family member who was in the industry already? No, uh, not at all. Uh, I, at my school there was a presentation by someone from an advertising I was interested in. Um, I started reading books, the book called The Hidden Persuaders by Vance Packard came out at the time. Uh, and I suppose also, you know, the whole thing it was, you know, I like selling, I like writing. Um, you know, I was either going to be a copywriter, a barrister, um, or a journalist. Okay. Um, and 
know, advertising seem the, the most interesting. So, everyone wants to know, why purple suits? Why purple suits? Well, um, I mean, again, lots of things conscious and unconscious. I mean, I didn't ever think I'd get a dress in purple. I mean, not all my clothes are purple. I think I've got about 15 Oswell Boateng suits, about 10 of those are purple, so the <laughs> majority are purple. Uh, and I, but I it, it, unconsciously, it's an incredibly powerful colour. I think it's powerful. If you go back, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, purple was the colour only allowed to be used by royalty. Uh, there's a particular sort of shellfish in the Mediterranean, and it's, that creates this purple colour. Uh, and so only royalty were allowed to use it. And then later on, uh, the churches were use it, so you see it in, in the purple of, of a bishop. Um, so at some unconscious level, I perhaps feel that I'm royalty. I can't <laughs> tell you whether that's true or not. How many suits do you own? I say about 15, yeah. 15 in total? Yeah. And is there a particular Pantone of, of purple that you like to stick uh, to, or any purple? I'm talking about and he keeps on making them. I like, this is, this is nice, but I, I take them even brighter, but he doesn't make them anymore. <laughs> but, but, but I think, you know, I think that the purple of the, these, this is, you know, a good look, the, the purple shoe, the, you know, the socks with a bit of purple, and, you know. The thing is, you know, the great thing about our business, you know, you don't have to take yourself too seriously. It's silly. You, you, too seriously, you, you could be a bit silly, and it's, you know, it's very. I'm very lucky. If you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? Superpower in the sense of being um, a magical power. Any way you want to interpret it. Well, I think you know the, the, the most powerful thing in the world is to have ideas. And I think the, the superpower would be to have, would be able to have the very best, the most powerful ideas on a continuous basis. Um, you know, I like having ideas. It's, it's, it's an exciting thing. And to a superpower would be the person to have, you know, ideas of Einstein quality every day. That would be good. How about if someone could just duplicate your suits in record time and make more of them? That's not bad, but that's not as good as having you know, powerful ideas. I mean, suits, okay. suits are great and Oswald well but you know, the, 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 the best thing, you know, the most powerful things in life are ideas. If you could turn back time, what would you do differently? Um, well, I wouldn't have, we wouldn't have floated the, the agency in 1983. I think that was a mistake, um, and I've said that before because I think it took our mind off uh, being a great agency. You know, uh, the negative BBH, they, they kept their eyes on the ball, and I think we got deflected. You know, we went trying to build a network around the world as well that deflected us from the UK market. So I think that's the biggest thing um, I wouldn't do. Uh, other things I wouldn't do. Um, Probably, I can't say, well, I should probably be a bit more cautious about getting married, given I've been married three times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, I've got five wonderful kids and I don't want to disappear any of them. And, uh, you know, I'm very lucky with my children. But I think, you know, I think, you know, I... And what other things would I do? I think, would I... You know, I, I wonder, you know, I stood for Parliament in 1987 and I did, you know, I enjoyed it, went, did really well. I decided not to go ahead with that and I wonder, sometimes wonder whether I should have stuck at it. But I think I'm not really, you know, I, I had fun, you know, at, uh, in the debates and I'm not really a committee man. And sitting in all those committees wouldn't have been good. So, you know, nothing major, nothing major. If you weren't, what do you do in your free time? Um, well, I two or three things I do. I, I spend a lot of time working on the Ideas Foundation, which is a charity I set up in uh, ten years ago to give um, creative scholarships to disadvantaged young people. So uh, I do that. Um, uh, other things in terms of hobbies, uh, I think theatre is one of my major one of my major. Um, my major fun, fun thing to do, and also getting to art. I love going to art galleries. Uh, but of all those sort of out of hours thing, my number one thing is probably cooking. You know, I'm a, uh, cooking is my big ho hobby. I'll 
cook um, halibut with tamarind sauce is my speciality. Have you ever wanted to go on one of those cooking programs? No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not in that league. Um, and, and I, you know, I, it's, it's not. And that's most of that sort of food is too fussy for me. You know, I like simpler, more straightforward, uh, and I really enjoy it. You know, I think you know, I'd, I'd much rather. You know, I like going to a restaurant, but I, you know, I also really enjoy. Um, you know, cooking some with some food for some friends and uh, and having a chat. How about sports? Have you oh been... yeah, yeah, yeah. How did I forget, how did I forget my tennis? I love tennis. Uh, I, you know, I only play, I only like playing doubles because I'm not good enough to play singles. <laughs> to cover the court. <laughs> to cover the court. Well, it's not just that. You have to be. You, you know, you get you get bigger. You know, you know, you get bigger a bigger space to get to get the ball into. Uh, I love tennis. And, and, and then um, my um, I don't play. But my 15 year old son is a great Arsenal fan, so I have to be an Arsenal fan as well. So I'm up to speed on Arsenal's adventures and very pleased about the defeat of Tottenham. <laughs> Fine, let's not talk about that. Thomas Spurs fan. Um, who's the most creative person you've ever worked with? I've ever worked with? Well, that's a really interesting question. Um, I suppose the, 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 the most creative people I've ever worked with have, have, have been Ron Collins and Andrew Rutherford, um, the, the, the founding partners of, um, of WTRS. And, you know, the, the people who later I've, I've worked less closely with, so you know, they, I've worked, um, but they, those were you know, fantastic. I never worked with John Hickson, so I can't really comment, but those two guys were born. Sadly, Ron is dead. What's been your favourite account to work on in your career? Um, the favourite account to work on in my career, uh, I think I'd probably, I mean every account, if any class watching, I love working your account. <laughs> They're one of the favourite ones, but I, the three you, in, in, I pick out in particular. One is BMW, because you know we've now done BMW for 32 years, and certainly I was very involved in the first 25. Great about that, developing the ultimate driving machine campaign. You know, we got it completely wrong with the first campaign, and BMW gave us the space to get it right, and then it then it became a you know, really powerful uh, engine to you know, to build the sales, sort of going from 12,000 a year when we started to 100,000 a year, which is an amazing increase over 30 years. So that's BMW. And do you drive a BMW? Of course I drive a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> what BMW do you drive? I drive the 5, the 5, the 530. Cool. The diesel version of the 530. Um, secondly, uh, it has to be orange because you're taking a brand from nowhere uh, and creating a concept which within five years makes that brand worth 29 billion pounds. I mean, it is unheard of. It's amazing. Uh, I know, and you know, all the stuff that went with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it was fantastic. And finally, um, uh, 118118, finding a way to get everybody in Britain remembering your brand name, you know, and so they can't forget it even if they want to, uh, and make it round from nothing worth over a billion pounds. Um, in a very exciting, you know, to become, you know, part of the culture and fabric of British life. Uh, those three, how about that? Fantastic. Um, what's been your favourite advertising campaign of all time? Maybe that you guys have done, or maybe you, they, you guys haven't done? No, I, I'd have to pick... I'd have to pick the early Volkswagen campaign done in the 1960s by Dolph and Birnbank. Um, you know, the ad with the Volkswagen people saying lemon underneath it. Yeah. That whole campaign, because that invented modern advertising. You know, that had a coolness, that had an authority, that had a wit. Uh, that, for me, is the best campaign in the history of advertising, full stop. Lovely, okay. Let's move on to a quick fire round. Right. Can Lion or DNA D Pencil? Uh, DNA D Pencil. And do you have either? Uh, I do have one, yes. Which one? I have one for copy in 1968. 
Liverpool and a can lime? I don't have a can lime. You don't have a can lime? I don't have a can lime. Oh, okay. Cats or dogs? Uh, dogs. Art directors or copywriters? Oh, copywriters. Apple or Android? Apple. Degree or no degree? Degree. No. I didn't get my degree, so let's say no degree. Ant or deck? Oh, I think Ant. Retained work or pitch work? Retained work. Web or mobile? Uh, web. Independent agencies or networked agencies? Independent agencies every time. <laughs> Outsource production or on-site production? Outsource production at the moment. And lastly, twist or stick? Uh, always twist. Thank you very much.